Welcome to the Quillen Physicians webinar on basic workflow for the front desk. This video will teach you the basic workflow from Xperior to all scripts. In this video we will be role playing with myself as the patient and Monaco as the front desk employee. It is recommended that you have viewed the logging in and out of all scripts and the basic navigation for front desk prior to viewing this as we will assume that you have basic navigation skills in this video. Hi, may I help you? Yes, I'm here for an appointment. And who you, will you be seeing today? Uh, I believe I'm seeing Dr. Harrell. Okay, let me pull up his schedule. And what is your name? Uh, Stacy Test. Okay. All right. And Miss Test, uh, let me go ahead and check you in and verify some information. Okay. And what's your address? It's 222 East Main Street, Johnson City. And your telephone number? 123-456-7890. Okay. And I'm showing that you have Blue Cross and Blue Shield insurance. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, may I see your insurance card, please? Sure. There you go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and scan this in, and while I do so, um, I need to just get a consent form signed from you. We uh, started using an electronic medical record, and this consent form basically gives us permission so that we can pull in your medication history into our system. Oh, so what all my meds from the pharmacy pulls automatically into the, the electronic record? Uh, well, yeah, what we have found that it really cuts down on errors since there is a direct link from your pharmacy into your chart. Oh, I see. Well, that's neat. Here you go. Okay, thank you. Now, after you have inputted all of the information in Xperior, you will then go over into All Scripts. From here, you're going to click on the Daily tab and pull in Dr. Harrell's schedule. It's always a good idea to pull your patient in from the schedule rather than searching for them as this ensures that the correct appointment is tied to the correct encounter. Now as you can see here, there is a green ARR in the A column. This means that the patient has been checked in in Xperior. Notice also on the schedule the NSH and the PEN. NSH means that the patient was no-showed in Xperior and PEN means that the appointment is pending, the patient has yet to arrive. Go ahead and single click on your patient and notice how the patient's name and demographic information populates into the patient banner. It's always a good idea to confirm that you have the correct patient pulled up. Notice that the patient's date of birth, phone number, etc. show up in the patient banner. Another thing that we'd like to point out is the MRN and other fields here. If the patient had a chart number in Xperior, it will populate in the other field and the patient account number in Xperior populates into the MRN field. Now we want to go ahead and show this um, on another patient since uh, Stacy Test doesn't have a number in the other field. So if, as you see here, the MRN number is the account number and other is the chart. So we're going to go back to our patient now. Now once you've confirmed that the correct patient is in the patient banner, go ahead and click on the blue eye or the information icon. This pulls up the patient profile dialog box. At the top you'll notice the FYI box and the chart alert box. FYIs are intended for non-urgent information about the patient. Information might include items such as patient needs an interpreter or wheelchair is needed. Please note that the FYIs are not to be used for billing or insurance information. That information should remain within Xperior. Now since our patient is in a wheelchair, we're going to add wheelchair needed to the FYI box. Chart alerts are used for urgent clinical information such as latex allergies or penicillin allergies. 
The front desk will be able to read these chart alerts, but they do not have access to create them. In the clinical information section, since our patient signed our medication history consent, granting us right to pull her medication history, we're going to go ahead and choose granted here. And as you notice, that uh, little icon with the warning sign went away when we chose granted. Next, we're going to check the demographic information. Now, most of this info will populate over from Xperia. Please note, though, that you can choose a PCP and a language in this first section. Now, at this time, we are asking that you do not touch the PCP section, as this information also does flow over from Xperia. If you need to change the PCP, please do this in Xperia, not in all scripts. However, with the language, we are asking that you go ahead and populate this information here. And you can do this just by clicking the drop-down box and choosing the correct language. If you scroll down a little bit more, you're going to see employer, emergency contact, and insurance sections. And again, all of this information is flowing over from Xperia, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of checking this information on each patient. A little further down is the Rx benefit plan. You don't need to do anything in the section as this section will populate automatically into all scripts based on the patient's insurance. And please note that not all patients will have something populate into this section. Moving on, next is pharmacy. Every office may decide to have someone different populate this information. It could be the front desk or it could be the nurse. We are going to go ahead and demonstrate how to pull in a pharmacy though just in case the front desk is expected to do this. Also, Miss Tess, so I can save the doctor some time, do you mind asking, or at me asking which pharmacy you use? Uh, no, not at all. I use uh, Blankenships. Okay, is that here in Johnson City? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Now, to pull this information in, we're going to go ahead and click on the binoculars, and a detailed dialog box pops up. Since the patient told us it was Blankenship in Johnson City, we're going to search for Blanken in Johnson City, Tennessee. Notice you don't have to put the entire word of the pharmacy, the entire name of the pharmacy, and you can just do uh, partial. I'm going to click search. As you can see, even though we hit search, nothing pulled in. The first thing you want to do if this happens is go back and make sure that you spelled the name correctly. And if we go back and look here, we, we left out an N. It's actually Blankenship. So we're going to change the name. Spell it correctly this time. And then hit search. And there you can see our, our pharmacy has pulled in. So we're going to click on this and then click OK. And it has pulled into the pharmacy section. Um, if the patient has a mail order pharmacy, you are going to pull that pharmacy in the same way. And as you notice here, our last section is associated providers. This is another section that may or may not be used by the front desk. Um, but we're going to go ahead and show you how to pull physicians in here in case this is something you are expected to do. Now, Ms. Tess, do you have any other doctors that we should know about? Uh, yes, I see Dr. Aiken for my back. Okay, I'll go ahead and add them into the system. Thank you. Now, to add an associated provider, you're going to do this basically the same way that we did with the pharmacy. Click on the binoculars and choose the provider radio button if the doctor is within the MEAC corporation or the referring provider radio button if they are not. You'll get a search box at which point you just type in the physician's last name and hit the binoculars. Now Ms. Tess, um, is it Dr. Todd Aiken or Dr. Mark Aiken? It's Todd. Okay, thank you. So here you choose the appropriate provider and then click the black down arrow to pull them into the field below and then click OK. At this point the patient is ready to be called back to be seen by the doctor. Here you'll just go ahead and hit save. And the last thing we're going to do on the patient is locate your floating clinical toolbar at the top of your screen and we're going to change the patient location and the patient status. We're going to go ahead and change the patient location by clicking on the drop down arrow to waiting room and the patient status is nurse ready. 
And that's it. Uh, we really appreciate your taking the time to view this video. And feel free to contact the help desk if you have any questions. Have a great day, everyone.